In our last few videos, we've been talking about the morphology of injured tissues and the morphology, uh, what does an injured tissue look like or an injured cell look like that is reversible, that, that can actually return to homeostasis, it can fix itself and can repair. In this video, we're going to talk about the morphology of necrosis. What does actually, af after you have passed the point of no return and the cell is past the, the, the damaged point where it can return and fix itself, what does it look like from a microscopic perspective and from a gross perspective of necrosis? We've been talking about this uh, picture here, and this picture is very good at explaining several key ideas. Again, the normal cell here is injured. We've already talked about this. We've talked about this um, necrosis part a little bit, but in, I want to talk about it in further detail. And I, f and I forgot to mention that there's three terms that are crucial to, dis well, not crucial, but you know, some pathology professors like to pick on these words or, and use these words in tests because it talks about the nucleus. Karyolysis, pycnosis, and karyorexis describe kind of what happens to this nucleus as the cell undergoes necrosis. So karyolysis is actually, so this is a cell, supposed to be a cell, <laughs> and this is a nucleus, and inside the nucleus there's chromatin or DNA. And in under and when the cell undergoes karyolysis in a dying cell, in a necrotic cell, the DNA is slowly deteriorated. And you can kind of see that this that the DNA here is disappearing. And that's what karyolysis is. It's just disappearing of the chromatin. Pycnosis is you have a cell, the same cell in the DNA, or the nucleus, and what happens in pycnosis is the cell, this nucleus becomes really small, and it becomes condensed, and everything starts condensing down on itself, kind of right here in nuclear condensation here. And then karyorexis is uh, at last, the last one is the nucleus is here, or the cell is here, and the nucleus kind of kind of starts breaking apart. It starts. Rexus is rupture, but I don't think rupture is the correct term. In medical terminology: rexus is rupture, and karyo is nucleus, so rexus is rupture. So the cell becomes starts becoming frag fragmented and you have little pieces of the nucleus kind of all all around here. So you just have pieces of the nucleus now. That's karyorexis. So karyolysis, pycnosis, and karyorexis. Your uh, pathology professor might like those on the test. So continu to continue on Let's talk about the morphology of necrosis. So the first type of tissue necrosis is coagulative necrosis. So in the last, let's see here. In the last uh, picture, we kind of talked about the microscopic um, occurrences or processes of necrosis. Now we're going to talk about the gross appearance. What would it look like if I had the tissue in hand? What would it look like? Ne coagulative necrosis. For that I'm going to use a picture out of Robin's Basic Pathology 8 edition. So here is um, coagulative, let me see if I can probably use white here, coagulative necrosis. 
Now you see that the the appearance or the structure of the gland or the tissue is still kind of intact. That's one of the features of coagulative necrosis. Now the injury, um, what it's thought, what it's uh, thought to be happening here is that when the it, the injury happens, the structural proteins and the enzymes are denatured and broken down. So that's why the architect or the the structure of the gland is still kind of intact. Um, and what will happen is that the leukocytes and phagocytes will come in here and they'll just slowly eat this away and destroy the mass that's here now of this necrotic dead tissue. And this injury usually happens due to ischemia. So loss of blood flow. So the blood that was coming in here somehow got blocked. This is a prime example of an MI, a myocardial infarction, or heart attack. This is what happens uh, during a heart attack. That some part of the blood supply to your heart this is not the heart, by the way, but sometime, some type of blood flow is blocked to the heart. The heart cells, part of the heart dies and undergoes coagulative necrosis. Let's go on to the next one. Liquefactive necrosis is usually due to bacteria or some kind of infection. Um, and it undergoes, let's just say I have a gland here, and some bacteria gets in here and um, starts killing these tissues, starts killing these cells. It actually, you can kind of see the root word here, actually turns to liquid that liquef liquefies the tissue, which is kind of a brutal brutal way but the bacteria liquefies this this tissue and it becomes a liquid and um, that's the type of necrosis that bacteria usually happens and it's usually yellowish and it usually is pussy you can kind of see some pus um, also remember from the last thing we talked about coagulative necrosis um, it usually caused by ischemia except in the CNS in the central nervous system in the CNS in the central nervous system if you have ischemia it usually undergoes liquefaction necrosis rather than coagulative necrosis now that's an exception and that's an exception only in the CNS that kind of usually happens that observation has been noted several times so On to the next one. Gangrenous necrosis is usually referred to as in the lower limb where uh, uh, blood flow, blood flow is blocked somehow. So you got blood, bl let's see here. You got blood, vo blood vessels coming down here. It's blocked somehow and you get, um, you get gangrenous uh, gangrene in the in the lower limb and usually that compromise because you got blood flow that's compromised to the lower limb bacteria bacteria can get in here and start causing kind of a liquefaction necrosis and that is called wet gangrene I'm sure we've all heard of wet gangrene and Wet gangrene is when bacteria get in there and then start causing liquefaction necrosis. But gangrenous, gangrenous uh, necrosis should be, I should put a, as a subsection of coagulative ne necrosis because gangrenous necrosis is coagula um, uh, coagulative necrosis but in the lower limb. And then when bacteria get involved, then it turns into liquefaction necrosis of the lower limb and that's called wet gangrene.